I'm Dr. Orion Taraban, and this is PsychAx Better Living Through Psychology. And the topic of today's short talk is life and the concept of the game. So this is something that I've given a great deal of thought to. And I've come to understand this construct, the game, is a fundamental lens through which we can view life and even existence itself. Life is a series of nested games. Let me explain what I mean by that. A game is anything with a goal and rules. And anything with a goal and rules is a game. That's it. You need both for a game to exist. If you only have a goal and no rules, then you just have chaos and confusion, and things tend towards dissolution. On the other hand, if you only have rules and no goal, then things tend to become restrictive and ossified, and that tends to strangle life. So at both extremes is death. Too much order is death, and too much chaos is death. But if you put the goal in the context of a set of rules, then you have a game, and that's where life happens. Now, when I say that life is a game, I'm not suggesting that life is trivial or frivolous. Games can be played very seriously, and they could also be played with very high stakes. But they remain games nonetheless. Let me explain what I mean by way of an example. While we're alive, we all have to play the game of survival. And one of the many rules of that game is that you have to keep 10 pints of blood inside of you at all times. If you violate that rule, you will lose the game of survival. You can argue about how this shouldn't be the way that it is or that you wish it were different, but that's just how it is. And we know that through observation that if you want to continue to play the game of survival, you have to keep at least 10 pints of blood inside of you. That's why the 10 pints rule is a rule. We derive the rule through induction. Now, survival isn't the only game we're playing at any one time. Within the game of life are many, many, many other games. And we're often playing several of those games simultaneously. And this is one of the sources of a good deal of misunderstanding and suffering on this planet. You can win one game while losing another, and vice versa. By way of example, people can also play the game of honor. And one of the rules of that game is to uphold your duty and commitments. If you violate that rule, you will lose the game of honor. Makes sense. Now, a person might find himself in a situation where he is forced to choose which of several competing games he wants to win, and which of several competing games he is willing to lose. For instance, this person might be in a situation such that his best bet of keeping those 10 pints of blood inside of him is to betray his duty and flee from the front lines of battle. In this case, he would win the game of survival, but lose the game of honor. On the other hand, if he stays in fights, he might win the game of honor, but lose the game of survival. He can win one or both, or lose one or both, but he can't avoid playing. The number of games is too many to mention. There's the game of physics, there's the game of chemistry, there's the game of relationships, there's the game of money, there's the game of sex, there's the game of friendship, there's the game of health, there's the game of kindness. And all of these games are nested inside of the overarching game of being alive. And we're playing many, many, many of these games simultaneously, whether we're conscious of it or not. Now, I'm going to talk more about the concept of the game in the future, and I'm putting this out as a general introduction so people can understand where I'm coming from. Stay tuned. What do you think? Remember to like, comment, and subscribe for the algorithm, please. And if you'd like to schedule a consultation, you can reach me at psychaxpodcast at gmail.com. Thanks for listening.